Scientists just made a historical discovery at the Grand Canyon that changes everything we knew about an ancient civilization that lived there. One of the discoveries even connects the Grand Canyon to the ancient Egypt. These set of ancient granaries were discovered along the Nanko Weep Trail, revealing new insights into the daily lives of the very strange Native Americans who once inhabited the area of the Grand Canyon. The Nanko Weeb Trail is located in the Grand Canyon National Park in Arizona. It is a strenuous 14-mile hike that descends 6,000 feet into the canyon. The trail is known for its beautiful views of the Colorado River and the towering canyon walls, but it is also known for its historical significance. The trail was used by the ancestral Puebloan people as a trade route to the river. They would travel down the trail to the river to trade goods with other Native American tribes. The ancestral Puebloans, also known as the Anasazi, were a Native American civilization that inhabited the southwestern United States from around 2000 BC to the 14th century AD. They were skilled farmers who relied on the fertile soil of the desert and the rivers that flowed through it to grow their crops. They also built elaborate structures, including cliff dwellings and multi-story apartment buildings that were carved into the rock faces of the canyons. The ancestral Plaboan people utilized the granaries to preserve their primary crops, including corn, beans, and squash, as well as other items like pottery and baskets. These structures were vital to their everyday lives as they facilitated the storage of crops and goods during the colder months. The revelation of the granaries has furnished novel perceptions into the daily routines of the ancestral Plaboan people, illustrating their proficiency in engineering and reliance on agriculture. It has offered a glimpse into their commerce customs and relationships with other indigenous communities. The new book, The Lost World of the Old Ones, Discoveries in the Ancient Southwest, was authored by David Roberts, a renowned mountaineer who has successfully climbed some of Alaska's most difficult peaks. To write this book, he embarked on a journey with only a backpack, venturing into the most isolated regions of the American Southwest. David Roberts decided to use the term Old Ones to describe the prehistoric peoples who inhabited various forms of the American Southwest, including the ancestral Plaboans, the Fremont, the Hohokam, and other groups studied by archaeologists. While some of these groups are known to be direct ancestors of the modern-day Plaboan Indians, from Hopi to Taos, others have disappeared from the historical records. Nonetheless, these ancient peoples left behind significant evidence of their existence and culture, which continues to fascinate researchers and the general public alike. The Fremont people are recognized as a unique group separate from the ancestral Plaboans, also known as the Anasazi. They lived in a territory located just north of the ancestral Plaboan land, which covers a large area including most of Utah, north of the Colorado River, as well as parts of Idaho, Wyoming, and Colorado. Given the vastness of their domain, it's reasonable to assume that they were different from the ancestral Plaboans. The Fremonts had some impressive granaries that were quite difficult to access and required expert climbing skills to build and maintain. Archaeologists typically underestimate the challenges involved in accessing these great sites because climbing isn't usually in their area of expertise. They often end up not being able to reach these locations at all. In the case of the granary that is described in the book, it was located 90 feet high up on a sheer cliff face. The archaeologists couldn't scale the cliff so they had to use modern equipment like repelling gear to descend from the top. The Fremont people didn't have access to such tools and techniques, which made it even more impressive how they managed to build and use these granaries. The researchers tried to piece together how and why the Fremonts were able to accomplish such feats, despite the challenging terrain and lack of modern technology. It's interesting to point out that there are theories of Plaboan civilization's connections to the ancient Egyptians. One reason for these assumptions is an Isis temple. The Isis Temple is a striking rock formation in the Grand Canyon, situated in the western part of the canyon within the Grand Canyon Parishan National Monument. This impressive geological feature was named by geologist Clarence Dutton in the late 19th century. Dutton played a significant role in naming many of the canyon's formations and was inspired by various mythologies, including Egyptian, Greek, and Hindu, when choosing names for these natural wonders. The Isis Temple's resemblance to an Egyptian temple with its steep cliffs and flat summit likely inspired its name. Isis refers to the ancient Egyptian goddess who was associated with motherhood, magic, and the resurrection of her husband Osiris, an Egyptian god of the afterlife. The likeness of the Isis Temple to an Egyptian temple has fueled speculation and rumors that ancient Egyptians may have visited the Grand Canyon. The disappearance of the ancient Plaboans 
has been labeled by some as a mystery wrapped in a riddle, with some even speculating that extraterrestrial beings were involved. However, Robertson disputes this claim and emphasizes that the ancient Plebeians did not vanish or disappear, but rather abandoned their settlements for various reasons. This misconception often frustrates modern-day Plebeians, who are the descendants of these ancient people. While there were migrations from the Colorado Plateau towards the south and east, where present-day Plebeians reside, it's unclear what happened to the Fremont, who inhabited lands further north. Some suggest that the Fremont may have disappeared entirely, as they cannot be linked to any living tribes today. Furthermore, the Cave of Domes, also known as Cueva de los Cristales, or Cave of Crystals, is a geological wonder located in Nica, Mexico. It is one of the largest crystal caves in the world and was discovered by chance in 2000. The discovery of the Cave of the Domes was made by two miners, brothers Juan and Pedro Sanchez, who were working in the Nica mine. The mine is known for its deposits of lead, silver, and zinc, but it is also rich in gypsum, a mineral commonly used in construction. While drilling a new tunnel in the mine, the brothers accidentally broke into a hidden cavern filled with massive crystals. At first, they thought they had found a vein of silver, but upon closer inspection, they realized they had discovered something far more extraordinary. The initial exploration of the cave was carried out by a team of scientists, led by Juan Manuel Garcia Ruiz, a mineralist from the University of Granada in Spain. What they found inside the cave was beyond anything they had ever seen before. The cavern was filled with giant crystals, some of which measured up to 36 feet long and weighed over 50 tons. The crystals were made of selenite, a variety of gypsum, and their unusual size and clarity were due to the specific conditions under which they had formed. The Cave of the Domes is located over 1,000 feet below the surface of the Earth, and the temperature inside the cave is a constant 136 degrees Fahrenheit, with 90-99% to humidity. The high temperature and humidity levels inside the cave allowed the selenite crystals to grow to an extraordinary size over the course of millions of years. The crystals were formed by a process called hydrothermal activity, in which hot mineral-rich water flows through the rock cavities and deposits minerals as it cools. It is important to note that the discovery of the Cave of the Domes was a significant discovery in the scientific community because it provided valuable insights into the processes that shaped the Earth's crust. The extreme conditions under which the crystals had formed were previously unknown, and the study of the crystals allowed scientists to better understand the mechanisms that drive hydrothermal activity. It is worth noting that this cave is known for its unique formations of gypsum crystals, which form dome-like structures on the cave ceiling. These formations have puzzled scientists for decades, and many have speculated about the possible connection between the Cave of the Domes and Mars. One theory suggests that the gypsum crystals in the Cave of the Domes were formed through the same processes that created similar formations on Mars. Scientists have long known about the presence of gypsum on the Martian surface, and many believe that it was formed through a combination of water and heat. The theory is that the same processes that form the gypsum on Mars may have also occurred in the Cave of the Domes. But there's more. The Grand Canyon is home to a number of unexplained phenomena, such as strange lights and mysterious sounds. Some have reported seeing orbs of light hovering over the canyon, while others have heard inexplicable noises that seem to come from nowhere. In 1927, Walter Pegg, a geologist and cave enthusiast made a significant discovery in the Grand Canyon. Peck found a large cavern hidden deep within the canyon walls, which would later be named Peck's Cave, in honor of his remarkable achievement. This discovery would prove to be significant not only for the scientific community, but also for the world of adventure and exploration. Peck's journey to discover the cave was not an easy one. It took him several attempts and years of exploring the canyon before he finally stumbled upon the entrance. In fact, it wasn't until he was exploring a remote area of the canyon, away from his original search area, that he spotted the cave's opening. He could see a small opening on the side of the canyon wall, and upon closer inspection, he realized it was the entrance to an expansive underground network of caves and chambers. Once Peck had discovered the cave, he began to explore its depths. What he found was a breathtakingly beautiful network of caves with stunning rock formations, underground streams, and hidden chambers. The cave was unlike any other discovered in the Grand Canyon, and Peck knew he had found something truly special. The formations within the caverns provide valuable information about the forces that shaped the Grand Canyon over millions of years. It's a rare glimpse into the geological history of the region, said Dr. David Brown, geologist. 
Pake's discovery was not just significant because of the beauty of the caverns he had discovered. The discovery was also important because it shed light on the geological history of the Grand Canyon. The rock formations found within the cave provided valuable insight into the formation of the canyon and the forces that had shaped it over millions of years. Peck's cave quickly became a popular destination for explorers and adventure seekers eager to explore its many chambers and hidden treasures. The cave attracted visitors from all over the world, each one eager to see the stunning formations and experience the thrill of exploring the underground network. Peck's cave is one of the most breathtaking underground networks discovered in the Grand Canyon. It's a testament to the power of nature and the thrill of exploration, said Dr. Robert Smith, cave explorer. Peck's discovery sparked a renewed interest in the exploration of the Grand Canyon and its surrounding areas. It showed that even in the modern age, there were still hidden treasures waiting to be discovered in the natural world. The discovery of Peck's cave would go on to inspire generations of explorers and adventurers, each one eager to uncover the secrets of the natural world. Also, in 1931, a group of adventurers stumbled upon a remarkable discovery that would change our understanding of the Grand Canyon's history forever, the Cavern Discovery. According to reports, the Cavern Discovery was made by a group of explorers, led by a man called Kincaid. They claimed to have found a massive underground chamber deep within the Grand Canyon, complete with an array of ancient artifacts and strange rock formations. Kincaid described the chamber as a kind of ancient library, filled with stone tablets inscribed with hieroglyphics and even mummified remains of a long-lost civilization. The discovery caused a sensation, with newspapers around the world reporting on the incredible find. Some experts even suggested that the cavern discovery could rewrite the history of human civilization, with some speculating that the artifacts found within could be evidence of an advanced pre-Columbian civilization. However, Despite the excitement generated by the discovery, the cavern discovery quickly faded from public view. One possible reason for the cover-up is that the discovery of a highly advanced civilization in the Grand Canyon would have contradicted the accepted narrative of human history. At the time, mainstream archaeology held that the Americas had been inhabited by primitive hunter-gatherer societies until relatively recently, when the first civilizations began to develop in Mesoamerica and South America. The discovery of a sophisticated culture in the Grand Canyon would have challenged this narrative and raised questions about the origins of civilization in the Americas. Another possible reason for the cover-up is that the artifacts discovered in the caverns may have been seen as too controversial or sensitive to be made public. The article mentioned that the weapons and tools found in the caverns were made of a strange alloy that could not be identified. It is possible that this alloy was of extraterrestrial origin or had some other significance that made it a topic of national security. If this were the case, the discovery of the caverns and their contents may have been suppressed to avoid public panic or to prevent other nations from gaining access to the technology. Regardless of the reasons for its suppression, the story of Kincaid's cavern discovery remains shrouded in mystery. While some researchers have attempted to explore the caverns in recent years, access to the area is restricted and the true extent of Kincaid's discovery may never be known. The story of Kincaid's discovery raises important questions about the role of mainstream science in determining what is considered acceptable knowledge and the possible ways in which discoveries that challenge established narratives may be suppressed or ignored. The alleged cover-up of Kincaid's discovery is not surprising, given the tendency of mainstream science to dismiss claims that challenge established narratives. It is important to remain open-minded and explore all possibilities when it comes to understanding our past," said Dr. Robert Schock, geologist and archaeologist. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell 